Nutrition is about 70%, my personal opinion, of when you want to lose weight and or gain weight. Nutrition is so important. Training and working out is fairly easy, but nutrition is, in my opinion, the most important thing to do. Once they get that done with the training, then they will begin to see the changes in their body. About fourth or fifth weekend, that's when the physical changes start to happen. Happen. They start losing weight. They start seeing, you know, a little muscle where they didn't see before. And once they start seeing those kind of physical changes, that's when they really know that the, the diet is, is, is really, really working. I coach tennis, but I also compete as well on the British Tour. Uh, I've managed to get my ranking up to top 300 in the country and aiming to broach into the top 200 this year. I started improving my program by going to the gym and realised I was running out of energy and it was finding it really tough when I was on court. So I decided to seek some nutritional advice and see if I could adapt my diet program to see if that made any difference. It took a lot of discipline, self-discipline, but um, the results at the end of it are just unbelievable, life-changing. Well, I think he's going to definitely give himself the best opportunity now because he's going to go out there fully equipped. I mean, it's one thing having a game, it's another thing having the support of it with uh, things like the right foods and uh, the fluids you take to the court. I mean, you have to be ready for anything up to like a three and a half hour match. So you have to make sure you've got enough water and fluids with you and occasional snacks and stuff. And most people don't go out with those things. And if you do, you give yourself an advantage. And it's all about edges. And uh, to be fair, he's doing everything he can to improve this. But... Um, it's no good just doing it on the court, you've got to do it off the court. And the discipline on the court needs to be done with the diet as well and the training programme that backs it up. So he's doing the right things at the moment. Hopefully uh, we'll see some silverware to back that up eventually. When we put this course together, we were very keen to try and formulate something that provided a very sound academic and theoretical basis, but also that actually linked through to the professional practice of sports nutrition, because at the moment, there tends to be a big gap between those two extremes. So the students on the course will actually not only have the, um, the sort of academic factual input, but they will also both observe and start to learn the actual practice of sports nutrition as well. And as we've heard from a couple of the athletes and the personal trainer, um, that you need to try and give people very, very practical advice. So they don't want to be told about grams of protein or milligrams of vitamin C. They want to know what needs to go in their shopping trolley when they go around the supermarket and what they have to try and cook for their next meal. So you always have to be able to answer the question, so what am I going to eat for breakfast tomorrow? What we've seen in the last year is the impact of the London 2012 Olympics, where we saw athletes in a whole range of sports do absolutely amazing things, but the realisation that it's not just about being able to run fast, it's about having the mental toughness, having the right diet, and being able to put all those things together to produce a peak performance at the right time. The, the essence of sports nutrition is really to relate the practice of good nutrition to what the demands are that the athlete has that's sitting in front of you. And clearly that's going to be very different if you have a 13-year-old little female gymnast who probably doesn't even make 50 kilograms as opposed to a 120 kilograms um, rugby player who is, is going to need a totally different sort of diet in order to be able to perform. Um, at, at the moment, there's a huge mass of information out there on nutrition and, and very specifically on sports nutrition. Um, on the internet, in magazines, by hearsay, the, the real problem with it is knowing what you can believe and, and what not to believe. And a lot of what we call the testimonial evidence is, is very, very beguiling. It, it all sounds so, so good and so doable that it's very easy to get pulled into thinking, oh, actually, I must have that supplement. Um, what we're trying to do is actually train sports nutritionists to be able to take a much more scientific viewpoint um, that they can then sort of relay to the customer, um, prevent them from spending a lot of money on things that either don't work or, or indeed can actually be you know, a, li a little bit dangerous, a little bit injurious. So it, it is a, a, a subject where everybody is, or likes to think they can be their own nutrition expert. Um, that would be lovely, but we certainly haven't got there yet, and so we, we need a lot of very well-trained sports nutritionists who can translate, if you like, the science into something that's very accessible and doable by the consumer.